going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here with Brian Alvarez for the next two hours talking pro wrestling as well as mixed martial arts here on the Sirius, uh, on Sirius Channel uh, 122 and the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Uh, we are going to be joined in about a half an hour or so by Sean Waltman. Another promotion. It seems like every week we talk about a new promotion. This one's pro wrestling. Years ago, we would always talk about new promotions, and the whole key was, Nobody on tele- nobody wanted to put them on television, and without television, there really isn't much you can do, realistically. So now, all of a sudden, come this summer, Brian, there's going to be so much television between pro wrestling and mixed martial arts that it's never going to end. Well, we've got like 500 channels now, and channels such as Versus, yep. I guess they need something to fill up. I actually get Versus on my cable system, and it's like half Versus and half the Golf Channel. And I can't imagine them having stuff to fill up 24 hours a day. So, you know, there's uh, there's room for MMA, and I think that we're going to see more groups this year with TV. And the difference is that when you do have 500 channels, just having TV doesn't necessarily even mean anything anymore. It depends it, on how it, it strong your TV is. Nothing unless the, the network is strong enough and it gets behind you and makes you a focal point of their advertising, like um, Spike has done with Ultimate Fighter and to, a, and to an extent TN, TNA as well. Yep. And, um, you know, you're on in a good time slot because people, you know, it's not like when I was growing up, when I was growing up we had maybe... Um, you had five channels. No, Actually, you may have had, had less. But, but we had we had um, we had wrestling on. Um, maybe I, I would say when I was growing up in in California, we had wrestling on generally twice a week. We had um, the, uh, the or sometimes three three times depending on whether sometimes San Jose Station would have the Royce Fires wrestling, and then we'd have the San Francisco would be the exact same show. Um, and then we also could get the Los Angeles wrestling on the Spanish Channel, um, which didn't even come in well in those days. But uh, that was all the wrestling we could get. So now, um, you know, you've got hours and hours of everything. But also, starting on Friday night, uh, MTV is going to be jumping into the wrestling game with Wrestling Society X. We've got Sean Waltman's going to be our guest in just a couple of minutes. And uh, he's one of the stars of Wrestling Society X. And he'll tell us a little bit about how that one's going to be different. Is Which Friday night is, the, is, it will be different. Is Friday night the pilot? Friday night is the debut show, even though the actual first show is supposed to air a week from Tuesday. The, to- the, I see. the debut time slot is 10.30 Tuesday night, which means it goes head-to-head with, the, with ECW. However, um, MTV put the uh, debut show on on Friday night, um, and we don't even know what time it's actually going to be because um, I've heard like five different times, but it's, it's listed at... It may be all five times, actually. Yeah, it's listed at 11 p.m., and they didn't really want, um, you know, the... It's funny because, you know, like the idea was to debut on, on a Tuesday in the regular time slot, but they, MTV just decided, well, we've got this time slot free on Friday, and it's actually going to air several times before the Tuesday debut, but the Tuesday debut is the ratings they're going to look at, and so, you know, it actually works against you. Yeah. Very sad news yesterday, um, or, or Friday, I should say, the, um, the death of Bam Bam Bigelow, Scott Bigelow, who was only 45 years old. He passed away at his residence in Hudson, Florida. Um, right now there is no um, cause of death that has been released. His girlfriend found him. I, they don't even know if he, yeah, he fell asleep or when he went to sleep he never woke up is basically what happened, and it's not the first time that we've heard that story. And, um, you know, probably, I don't want to speculate what it probably is other than, you know, maybe some, for, for, you know, version of a heart attack. And uh, it's another one. Um, you know, it's just an, an unbelievable, you know, we talk about this when, when, when this happens. It happens several times per year, every year, where a wrestler who we all grew up watching uh, passes away at a very young age, you know, and someone who was a major star, Bigelow, of course, a star, big star in Japan, big star in WWF, headlined WrestleMania with Lawrence Taylor, uh, wrestled pretty much all the big names everywhere in every promotion, and... Uh, had a lot of uh, problems at the end with, with painkiller addictions and, and back problems and um, pretty much had stopped wrestling in the last several years, although he did wrestle in matches. I think he wrestled in matches late as this past year. Um, and uh, I know that uh, people had seen him. He was in an independent show in Florida maybe a month ago, and they said he was looking great. So, um, But that's the situation. And um, just very agile. 
a big guy. You know, when, ba- when Bam Bam Bigelow first came along, he was doing stuff that that nobody had ever done before. There never was never a guy who was. I think I think he was legitimately 380 pounds about the time he started 360 to you know ranging from like 360 to 390, sometimes 400, and um, you know drop kick off the top rope, moon salts. Oh, he did his uh, cartwheel. Dive, cartwheel diving headbutt. Um, the first time um, he worked for a major promotion was the Memphis promotion with Jerry Lawler. And, I mean, they, boy, you want to talk about, you know, and, of course, you know, this, you're talking about a guy who had a handful of indie matches. I mean, a handful. And and went to Memphis um, because he had a good look. In those days, uh, there weren't a lot of people with tattoos on their heads in those days. So you know, now there are. But but that was actually, like, the thing that, that made him kind of stand out. And so um, Jerry Jarrett gave him a job. Um, and he went in there, and uh, they liked his look. And the first thing they did was put him over Jerry Lawler. To make him a star in one night, and he was a star in one night. And Jerry Lawler made this guy look like—I mean, he was the greatest thing that ever was in wrestling. You know, whatever moves he could do, he did. And Jerry Lawler, you know, put the match together. And and it was funny. I mean, he—he he was such—he got over so big in Memphis, and then he went to Dallas. And George Scott was booking, and they called him Crusher Yurkoff in Dallas. And Dallas, you know, he was working with Von Erichs, and he was completely unimpressive. And it was just like, what was wrong? You know what I mean? And it really shows... Well, it's kind of a story that has been told many times in wrestling with, with guys that have great athletic ability and a great look, but aren't really good workers. But when you put them in the ring with somebody that understands, okay, what can you do and what can you not do? And we'll do what you can do and avoid what you can't do and, and end up having a great match with them and sort of fooling a lot of people. But here's the other thing, too. They brought him in, and on, in his very first match, he beat Lawler. And it was like, at that point, when you have the credibility of beating the top guy, you know what I mean? People will overlook. I mean, if you're tentative and things like that, and he was not. You know, like, like there's certain things where you look green. I mean, he he was good enough to where he didn't look bad, if you know what I'm saying. It was I, believable that on this night he could have beaten Jerry Lawler. Oh, yeah, it was, it was done real well. And, of course, then he went to Japan, and he was, and, you know, he was a big deal in Japan because they love big guys, and, you know, they never seen a big guy so agile or a big guy, you know, that big of a guy who was so agile. So he was a big star with New Japan, and of course WWF took him very early in his career, and uh, you know he had a long career. He had some very big years, um, and um, was was you know a major star. Him and Big Van Vader were kind of like a monster tag team in Japan in the late '80s and early '90s, and uh, you know I remember him very very well throughout his whole career. I think I um, I think I knew him before or right after he got started, um, before he had ever had a match, I, and I don't remember the show. But um, he was friends with Paul Heyman, and um, Paul Heyman would write stories in wrestling magazines about Bam Bam Bigelow before the guy ever had a match. You know, Paul was like his publicity agent, and Paul would write wrestling magazine stories, and you know, made him out to be the next you know big thing in wrestling. And you know, and I and I, I was and everyone in wrestling was like that. It's like, okay, yeah, sure, right? Because you know what I mean. It's like you always hear, oh yeah, this guy can do this, this guy can do that, but you never believe it because wrestling in those days. You know, even more than now is just a, a business that so many people were so full of it, right? Sure. So, so he did this match with um, at at a nightclub, and I think it might have been Studio Fifty Four because Heyman did the publicity of Studio Fifty Four uh, when he was nineteen years old, and this this was right around that time. And I mean, I and it was on, and I don't remember the show. It might have been Entertainment Tonight or whatever, a show like that. It was a national show, and here's this guy who no one had ever heard of, and he. Um, did a diving headbutt off the top rope at his size, which freaked people out. And I remember Joel Watts, uh, Bill's son, calling me up. And, uh, you know, we'd both seen it and just go like, what the hell was that? <laughs> so he talked to his dad, you know, and it's like, you know, like, to, 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 you know, like, you know, no one's ever heard of this guy. And Bill's reaction, of course, was, well, who's he ever beaten? So he ended up going to Memphis and ended up in Dallas. And I don't think he, he, he never ended up with Watts. You know, he could have. just never worked out that way. But anyway, I thought... Uh, who did he ever beat in this fake sport? Um, you know, but in, you know, it's funny because in those days, that's how they used to, uh, you know, determine your your rank in the sport is um, who you were picked to beat. And if you hadn't been picked to beat anyone or you hadn't worked the territory, you know, it didn't matter how impressive you looked. Who you know, you weren't a star. Well, in a way, it's kind of interesting because in those days, that did mean something, who you beat in the fake matches. Because it, it, Oh, it absolutely did. Yeah, I mean, when I watch, <clears throat> I was just watching SmackDown, and they talk about Mr. Kennedy, 
And the big the big drawing card is he beat six world champions Except last year. Everyone with the fluke, he didn't really beat any of them. But, but I mean, even then, the point is like, what does that mean anymore? Not a whole lot. No, but if Mr. Kennedy had actually, hey. you know, the thing is, is, is if Mr. Kennedy had actually, you know, there were guys. If like he had decisively him. beaten six world champions that people cared about, that would mean something. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were there were legendary deals in the old days when they would groom guys for world championship matches, where they would bring in like you know big stars, and you know the guy would beat like six former world champions or something like that, but he would actually beat them. And by the time they got to that title match, I mean that was a legitimate thing to where people considered that like a big time title match. I don't think I don't think Kennedy and Batista that anyone's considering that a big time title match. Um, no. Well, the fact that it's on the undercard of the Royal Rumble tells you something. Yeah, but they, I mean, they've had big-time title matches on Royal Rumble cards before. Sure, but yeah. if they really thought that this was a big deal, they would save it for a standalone show next month. Well, especially when they have to do so many. Yeah. Um, well, we've already seen... The other thing is we've already seen the Batista, um, Mr. Kennedy program, and it wasn't too bad, but it's going to be a challenge in that world championship uh, slot, if you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. it's not an eight-minute match where, you know, Mr. Kennedy's going to bleed a gusher, you know what I mean? Um, they need to get... Batista on a different tour from Rebecca DiPietro because they are becoming each other. Have you notice that? It's the problems were before before her. Oh, he's getting his commentary on Friday in his interview. I thought, my God, that's Rebecca. Oh boy, not good. No. So anyway, I got to ask you a question very quickly. You you were talking about um, WSX and. I've been having this discussion, so I thought I would get your take on it. The rating for the show, what do you think it's going to do? Ah, uh, God, you know, I don't know. Um, the debut rating, I mean, you're going against ECW, doesn't help. Um, you're going against, I believe they're going to be going against the MSNBC thing. Not that that's going to really be a factor, Warrior Nation. Um, so I will say 0.7. I'm thinking a point five. Well, we will see. Uh, also, before we go any further, I also want to mention WWE firings this week. Quite a few. Uh, Sylvester Turkai. You know, the, the one thing about the firings this week, this is this again, and it, it points to so much about WWE, the, the organization level. And WWE used to be such a great organization. I mean, I mean, even if you didn't like the wrestling or you didn't like the angles. It was like things were planned out. It was it was so professional. I mean, like, when guys were going to get fired, even if you didn't know ahead of time, they made sure that they buried everyone. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, they did the jobs on the way out. Well, look the at guys the who were doing the jobs on the way, what, what it was. The fact is the promotion got their pound of flesh out of everyone. And here, like with Turkai and, and with Tatanka, I think the last time I saw Tatanka on television, he was pinning Jimmy Yang. He was. That was his last match. So it's like... So obviously, when that happened, which was a, um, that aired a week ago Friday, so so when uh, at that point, and even this last week, where they didn't at least give Jimmy Yang a win or do something to, to bury the guy, as of Tuesday of last week, and this guy was fired on a Friday. They did not know they were going to fire him. Yeah. Well, and 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 that goes. And Trakai was the same way. Trakai was on the ECW show. Um, I mean, he was just standing there, but they didn't. You know, they he didn't was have in the somebody. same role as always. He didn't get beaten up. He didn't get sent packing. Yeah, it's not like they had, you know, they had Bobby Lashley spear him in 45 seconds to, yeah. you know, so, like, the, when you look at this list, you know, you can tell, like, at least with those two, um, this was not a well thought out, um, thing. It was just like, one day they got, and we're gonna, we're gonna clean house, and all of a sudden, you know, somebody spoke badly about them, and they were gone. Those well, two. Well, even then, it's sort of funny that, okay, let's say you wake up Wednesday and you decide, okay, we need to trim 20, Useless people, in our opinion, from this company. And you make your list, and then can't you just say, well, you know, let's write these people off this week, and then we'll fire them next week. Yeah. But, I there's, don't there's know. like I, this giant rush to get everybody fired so you didn't have to pay an extra $750 or something. And uh, I don't think finances, I know finances aren't such, that 750 was important. None of it, 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 it's not like the company's under any financial duress whatsoever. whatsoever. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, they, they should, I mean, they had, they had um, you know, big European tour and things like that, um, you know, this quarter that, that's coming up. I mean, and this, is, this is actually the next quarter, you know, with, um, 
But whatever, you know, it's, it's not like um, yeah, it's not like they're under any kind of financial duress. They just they just made the thing. So anyway, it's those two. Tony Mamaluke was let go. Um, Doug and Danny Basham were let go. Rodney, I'll tell you what. Here, this was the moral of this week. It's really bad to be to married, have, um, to be in a family, a wrestling family, whether a real family or a contrived family, because we had four families, three real and one contrived, and they were all uh, they were all fired. Doug and Danny Basham were a contrived family. I, I had, have to bring something up since you just mentioned the Bashams. Another strange thing. Yeah. The big star on Raw that's getting the title match against John Cena is Umaga. Yes. who used to be part of Three Minute Warning. and Basically, he's been repackaged, and they've done very, very well with him. And I just sort of I look at some of these guys that are fired, mostly the Bashams, because I saw them in Ohio Valley, and they were so great, and they were never given any chance whatsoever to be great. And the whole idea was we're going to make them as generic as possible because they're twins or whatever, and they end up being taken off, off TV, and, and ultimately they're fired... To make way, I guess, for far less experienced guys like Deuce and Domino, God bless them, brought up to SmackDown, who just in the ring are so far from ready. And and, and you know what? As, as we talked about earlier, I don't know that Domino will ever be ready. <laughs> because, you know, Cliff, Cliff Compton, he's been around for years. I, I, I was I, just going to say, you chose him of the two. I, I'm not sure either of them will ever be ready. Well, you know, I mean, uh, the other one, I mean, Jimmy Snuka Jr., you know, which is, you know, the... Deuce, I mean, uh, he's been around for, for years. I mean, he's probably been around eight, eight, nine years in wrestling. This may be the pinnacle of their athletic ability, yes. Um, but yeah, I, so would just, I would just, it was so strange to me that, you know, you, the, the Bashams undoubtedly have some talent. And you couldn't think of anything to do with these guys? It is funny, you know, when you bring up the, you know, uh, the company, you know, and I hear it all the time is they complain that, that the depth of talent in the business today isn't there. Um, you know, there's so many, there's so few guys that are what we would call, you know, experienced guys who could carry a match in this and this. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then they have these guys. And they fire them. They don't do anything with them and they fire them. Rodney Mack and Jazz, who are a married couple, which isn't good, and Mike and, um, Tracy Taylor, who you, you wouldn't, you know, unless you uh, watch Deep South Wrestling, you wouldn't know them, but they are also a married couple. So, uh, that was not particularly good when you are a husband and wife and you're both of your paychecks stop on the same day. Kind of sad, huh? Well, I'm jaded to it now. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the bottom line is a lot of these people were not, well, almost all these people that we're going to go through on the list from this point on were not being used anyway. Um, C.W. Anderson, um, the Shane Twins, which is another family, legitimate brothers, legitimate twin brothers, who were working as the Gemini and... Uh, they had been um, they'd been using them on dark matches on the SmackDown uh, TV tapings, and they were going to bring them in, or they were. Uh, it looked like they were going to bring them back. They had a short run. One of them got hurt when they were managed by um, uh, Simon Dean several months back. Uh, Dave Heath, the former Gangrel, who has not been used at all, he was signed for ECW and then dropped. Bill Demott, which was something of a surprise, uh, the coach from Tough Enough, who has been a coach. I'm since actually that. not surprised, to be honest with you. Really. Well, yeah. tell me. I think that there have been people that have been wanting to get rid of Bill DeMott since before he actually started in Deep South. Oh, oh that's no. There, Bill DeMott had his enemies. There's no yeah. question. Yeah. It's just the thing that I had. He, he just. They had also, you know, and a lot of the wrestlers at Deep South, you know, had complained about him, but the company had always backed him up. Uh, what do you know about Deep South? Uh, not a whole lot, just that there are going to be a lot of changes. Um, obviously they're going to have to put somebody in to replace Bill DeMont, but... Because there's a lot of people deep south that have not been fired that are very nervous right now. Yeah, I, I don't know if, you know, th this may be the end, but I don't know. That's pretty much all I know about it right now. Okay, and then, uh, Tommy Swade from deep south, Tony Santorelli from deep south were let go. Ryan Reeves, who was from Tough Enough, um, from OBW, was let go along with Big Jack Bull. Seth Skyfire is actually a pretty talented wrestler, uh, but too small. They were not going to do anything with him, so I'm not at all surprised. And Al Snow's wrestling contract was uh, dropped, but he's going to remain a trainer in OVW. So that's the list. I do know that the replacement for DeMond is probably going to be announced tomorrow. Really? Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. Uh, will be interesting to see. Uh, we, uh, so when we talk about the TV, you know, we mentioned the versus thing. Um, we mentioned the MTV versus. Um, also, 
my network TV, which is um, actually, you know, some pretty good stations around the country, this summer they will start uh, broadcasting the IFL, which... What is my network TV? Because I, I've i never heard of it. My network TV is mostly stations around the country that were UPN stations last season, and, of course, UPN went out of business. And in some markets... Um, by Those our market, hung on, basically. In our market, um, San Francisco, the... UPN station went to, um, it became CW Network, but in most markets it was the WB station that became the CW station. So in those markets where the CW station, or where the WB station became the CW station, the UPN station became the My Network TV station. And that would explain it, because my UPN became CW, so okay. I'd never even heard of My Network TV. Well, it's, it's probably there in your market because it's in 96% of the country. Really? And in, and in most markets, I don't know what the Seattle affiliate is, but, um, I mean, it's strong. It's got strong stations in, in, in most of the major markets. New York, San Francisco, and Chicago, very strong stations. There's a very uh, good... Or L.A., I should say. I don't, know what Chicago, I don't know how strong the Chicago station is. It's probably fairly strong, but the L.A. station is, is uh, I believe, uh, KCOP, which was which actually broadcasted wrestling in the old days. But they're going to be doing um, prime time. IFL starting uh, probably in the summer. All the details of that contract will probably be announced in a week or two, but the deal is a, a deal. It's a done deal. They're on. Hello. You there? I'm here. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mentioned a little bit earlier that, you know, we have 500 channels. A lot of people have 500 channels now, and, and there are a lot of channels that I never knew that I had until I'm programming the DVR for something, and I found out I had the Versus Network. I found out I had FSE so I can get the uh, Lucha Show. So, you get FSE? Uh, yeah. I presume um, I never knew I had it until like two days ago, so I'm very happy wow, about I don't, that. I don't, we, we, we have to pay extra to get FSE. Really? I, I have it for some reason. They just keep adding channels. Maybe, have maybe no, we have it now and I haven't checked and it was just before. You, you might want to check because I, I, I checked about podcast, two right, months ago and didn't have it. So Yeah. Okay. So We have you... Sean Waltman on the line. Okay. Sean, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty good. We're doing good. Sean. Can you hear me okay, you guys? We hear you good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, Sean, I mean, the, the one, the reason we got you here, among many, is uh, that Wrestling Society X is going to be starting on TV on, on actually Friday night, and but it's the regular time slot is going to be Tuesday at 1030. And you were there for um, the, la the tapings of the first season. And uh, this is, from what we were told, is going to be very different from the wrestling product of WWE and, and also of TNA. You've kind of got your own style. And it's a 30-minute show, and there's going to be some musical elements. And tell us what your thoughts were from the tapings and what you know. I, uh, well, I mean, if, if, how, if how it was uh, shot and, and all the preparation and things that uh, went into it are any uh, indication of, of how different it is, it's going to be really different. Um, um, cause I mean, I, it's, the way they were doing it was totally, um, unlike anything I'm used to. It took a little bit, uh, for me to get used to it. Uh, they just, they're very exact how they, how they, how they're, uh, doing everything about the show. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, have you guys seen, uh, seen the stuff on it? I mean, what do you guys think? I haven't seen enough of it. I mean, to, I mean, I've seen clips, but I don't think that's, you can really judge a show from clips. Right. I've seen the uh, trailers on the internet. I think there have been tr two trailers thus far, but I haven't actually seen any of the shows. Have you seen any of the full shows yet? No, I was in the editing uh, uh, in the studio um, when they were doing some of the editing because there were some things that I was concerned about, and it was really cool, man. They were editing like eight eight of the shows at one time, and um, so I saw it, I saw it, like I mean it's going to have like a. You know, the, the, it's gonna, they're gonna put it through a filter to give it a certain look. You know, like a grainy look to it, and the lighting is, is different. I mean, there's a lot of things that are really different in the, uh, um, the po it's, it's, uh, the post production of it is a, is a, is a huge part of the show. More so than other, uh, you know, other stuff I've been involved in. And, uh, and the guys, I mean, they got a pretty impressive, uh, crew of guys there. Just, I don't know, the the average person out there might not know who they are. So, uh, who are uh, you? I mean, like, you know, there, there are a lot of, you know, they mostly used, they had a few veterans like you, but mostly they used younger guys that had not been exposed 
um, on a you know major league level. Well, I mean, who are you impressed with? I mean, I know like a lot a lot of them, you know, a lot of great flyers. I think that was kind of like the direction they were going. Right. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of that stuff, a lot of crash and burn stuff. Teddy Hart just blows me away with some of the stuff. He actually, uh, just of the stuff he tried, I mean, and he pulled a lot, most of it off, too. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, that guy Ruckus I liked a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess a lot of that has to do with the fact that I, I thought they were good guys, too, you know. Um, uh, crap, the, I like that, that, uh, that 70s team, they got this, this Disco, I think, what's his name? Disco. Disco uh, Fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Joey Ryan. Mm-hmm. I thought that act was kind of cool. And, and uh, um, that was, oh, the, the Matt Classic guy's off the hook, you guys. Mm-hmm. The one yep. with uh, the Cole Cabana, that's unbelievable. Yep. So for, for, for me sitting there watching it, anyhow, I was thoroughly, uh, thoroughly entertained by that. Mm-hmm. You started out very young, and you did a lot of high flying. But Teddy Hart, you know, he goes off a lot of very high things, basketball hoops, and that sort of thing. Do you ever talk to him about how he's going to be feeling in about ten years? Do you ever give him an advice, or is it, is it pointless? Peanut stuff. I'm sorry, you guys. There's no problem. Oh crap! I, I lived through that one. I'm sorry, buddy. Hey. Sorry, you guys. I got a crying baby here. Yeah. Oh crap. Be okay. I'm on the I'm on the phone. Okay. Okay. This is every day at Dave's house. Actually, not anymore. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> One of those unexpected uh, live radio yeah. moments. <laughs> yeah. How old? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we yeah. hear you. Okay. How old? Three years old, and he's oh, mad okay. because mommy just left. Okay. He's well, I'm ticked. I've been through that one. Uh, actually, he's good now because I'm five easy. years. <laughs> yes, so, uh, so where were you guys? the question was basically, all the high flying that you did, you were very young, and Teddy Hart's also young and doing a lot of pretty crazy things off basketball hoops and that sort of thing. Do you ever talk to him about, I don't know, how he's going to be well, feeling in 10 years? A bit? Any, any advice for Teddy Hart, or is it pointless to ask? Is it pointless to, um... Is it pointless to tell him this advice? Well, you know what, it, 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 it is kind of, but you still like. I still feel that because because the guys did it for me when I was younger. Even though I disregarded most of it and didn't realize at the time. Everyone, you know, and, that's the nature of wrestling. Sure. So it's my job, even though they're going to disregard most of it. <laughs> it's still my job and my duty to tell them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like if you're, well, no, I'm not going to go with that analogy because we're on, like, regular radio here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um. Now, now what, what are you being told? And we're going to actually have Kevin Kleinrock, who's um, actually running this. We're going to have him on the show in a couple of weeks. But I want to, you know, what is the goal of this promotion other than, you know, you're going to be doing TVs? You know, you know, fairly often, or you know, I mean, like, you know, you, you do a lot of TVs in a one-week period. I mean, have they talked about uh, house show tours or DVDs yeah. or, or or things like that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and 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 um, I guess like people don't really know a whole lot about this. Hardly, right? I mean, is that is that no, the, is no, that, no. I mean, it's, is it's that the not, case? It's, it's not. I don't think it's been pushed that hard. No, and I don't think people right. know much about it at all. I think, and, and uh, talking to Kevin about this, it's, he's kind of done that uh, purposely, tried, tried, tried to uh, keep it, you know, where not much was known about it. And uh, and I guess a lot of that was having to do with the fact that MTV hadn't even announced it yet. But, um, yeah, no, he's got a lot of things going in the works, you know. I hate to really, like, spill the beans on any of them, but, I mean, I'm sh- you know, the things that you mentioned, I think, you know, the things that people are thinking he should do, I'm pretty sure he's probably doing them. What? I you mean, know what I mean with the with the house shows and overseas tours and things like that. What type of of um, I mean, what like like as, as far as like differences from the standard WWE product, and also what type of audience do you think this is mainly aimed at? Like, is it a younger audience, a male audience, a female audience? Um, I think they're really pushing for a total. Totally 
uh, an, an audience that's to totally not even a, uh, an audience that would normally watch wrestling, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and which I think, I mean, it's the you know it's on MTV, and MTV has had a major uh, amount of input into what was going to be on the show. Um, and they were, I think they were very uh, adamant about some of the things because they feel like they know what uh, <laughs> what their audience wants to see. And they, you know, I mean, they do have a a pretty good track record, I think, for for a lot of a lot of you know shows. So what what, um, what what type of stuff do you think was coming in from from that end? You know, like that that was different from you know what we see on wrestling today. Um. Just some of the things that they wanted to include on there, like, um, well, I, you know what? Um, if they didn't want me to answer these questions and they couldn't ask me to do the, uh, the interviews, I'll just tell you, like, there's one where Teddy Hart's shocking somebody with some bar, some wire, some, you know, live... A live uh, wire? Live wire. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, uh, there's something that, uh, in there where somebody gets thrown in wet cement. You know, things like that 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 they wanted in there mm -hmm. that are kind of, you know, a little bit different from what I'm, I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, I guess. They taped, what was it, eight eight shows at first? Is that the deal? Yeah, um, I, well, it was a total of ten. Ten? Okay. Um, so they, they, we did, the, obviously, we did the pilot back in uh, February, um, and then we just did nine uh, episodes, um, you know, this time, and... The, on the 30th, the first show that'll, that'll air will, will be the pilot, and then pick up from there. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I mean, you know, I was thinking about that uh, during break, you know, you're talking about asking me about the guys that I that I like there. You know, I mean, there's a thing. I, I, I'm pretty much like down near everybody on, on the on the roster, and, and, and even, Van, you know, Vampiro, um, who I've had, you know, had some disagreements with. Uh, professionally, I mean, I, you know, I can understand why the guy's a star, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he takes it pretty serious, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, you know, he was busting his ass behind the scenes there. Well, it was so, a big thing for him, you know, because he's, he's, he's never had a chance in this country to be the star right. that he was in his in, in Mexico, real, realistically. And this is, you know, if this thing takes off, he's, you know, he's the veteran star of, of the crew. Yeah. Yeah, man, and 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 he's really busting his ass. Um, and uh, um, Kevin what about the human is, tornado. Is, is, I, 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 what's that? Human tornado. Oh, I love the, I love that guy. I actually worked with him on one of the uh, episodes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I've been I've uh, been in a tag match with him out east one time. I just I think he's a. Uh, I like his I like his uh, gimmick. You know, I like his act. It's tight, you know. Um, like, you know, like I was going to mention Kevin Kleinrock, mm -hmm. and uh, like he's so refreshing to work with. You guys, you know, he's got such a f different vision of of things. You know, um, it just he thinks outside the box. You know, I think he's really smart, and I think uh, um, I think people are going to are going to get a chance to see that. And he's just like the, probably the best guy in the world to work for. Mm -hmm. Having having uh, Houston Curtis, the other guy. I mean, they've been a dream. I've been a nightmare for those guys. I mean, I drove I drove them crazy, and they're they've just been awesome about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you had you had some problems with some of the things conceptually when you were first there um, on that at that taping, didn't you? Pardon me. You had some problems conceptually with some of the things when you first. Absolutely. Got them. Yeah. Absolutely, and and I we addressed them. You know what? And it was it was. It was really hard for them. Uh, you know, I, I made it kind of difficult uh, for them, um, and and uh, because I felt so strongly about some of the things, you know. And they just they went they bent over backwards to try to you know to try to um, you know if they if they agreed with me on, on it they try to fix it and and it's not easy for them because they have to have all this stuff laid out and given to MTV. So far in advance, you know, and they're really MTV didn't want there to be much uh, in the way of de deviating from the from the plan, you know. Mm. But they managed to, you know, they managed to get the, these things done pretty 
Did MTV uh, had any kind of um, thing as far as, like, is this going to be a promotion where you're going to have no blood, a lot of blood, or blood not an issue? I think blood isn't, isn't really an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, get that. I don't get that impression. Well, there were explosions yeah. and that sort of thing, so things have to be somewhat well, sure. when you have exploding cop and match or something. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. Was it hard when you have a company like that where, where you're going to have some huge dives and you're going to have some things blowing up but still trying to stay in MTV's requirement zone? Um, you know what? They've done a, they've done a pretty good job of, of, um, with what they're, with the, with what they have to work with because of the jackass lawsuits and all that. You know, they, they, in my opinion, from watching the show, if the average person doesn't know that we're, that we're working under these, you know, constraints, I don't think they're going to no, really notice too too much. Maybe some things. What, what's the basic gist of what we're going to be seeing on this show? You know, um, uh, you would not believe the amount of wrestling they're packing into uh, into a thirty minute show. Now, how many matches? That's, how I many mean, matches? they're they're getting I, I, it's they're getting a lot of wrestling and still still having time. For you know their their little you know backstage stuff and and you know all, you know all the other segments. I mean that's I was I was pretty much shocked that they were able to you know to enable all that. So now, how, how many uh, quite, quite a bit of wrestling. How many matches are you so like three matches in a show? Two matches in a show? Some some uh, some shows will be three matches. Yeah. So I mean I think that's a lot considering freaking you know. Vince sometimes doesn't have that in the first whole hour. Yeah, and uh, TNA has three matches in an hour, but they total eight minutes. A breath, right? Yeah, and these aren't these aren't necessarily one minute matches either. You know, I mean, my match with Vamp for the for the title was it like a, a t twelve minutes or something. Really? Maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. They might, you know, they might cut, try to chop some of it up. Who knows? Is it, is it going to be what? mainly like uh, like a really fast paced, high flying type style, or, or, or a lot of it? A lot of it. I can promise you, mine's not going to be that way. It hasn't <laughs> been. And and you know, I still you know, I've done some flying, and and I, I think my stuff's a little bit more aggressive looking though. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, than than a lot of the, the other guys. Too. I mean, because I can't compete with those guys on. I mean, these guys are doing incredible stuff. I mean, anyway. Aren't they doing an internet show uh, as well with, uh, yeah, yeah. matches? Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, they are. They're doing that and, uh, oh yeah, that's right. And, and they're, they're, I think they got some, like, amped mobile stuff going on or, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think they're on the ball on, on, on a lot of this stuff, you know. I mean, I guess that's what MTV brings to the table, you know. Yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, that would be their expertise. Yeah, and uh, so how, how I mean, they know? obviously, you know, they they know that they have a track record of success. So I'm how, how they, you know how heavily like are they going to be promoting this as far as MTV on the network on some of the other shows? Is there any cross promotions that you know of going on? I, I sure ho I sure hope so. I th I've mentioned it to you know to them yeah uh, myself, and I guess I I can't imagine that I'm the only person that mentioned it to them. You know? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I just I haven't heard so much about me that like you mean like with uh, Devo and Bam and that type of stuff. Just uh, whatever the different shows are, yeah. MTV News or doing publicity stunts or things like that. I'm doing a well, I'm doing a couple of things. I think um, I think I'll um, hopefully I'm going to be on Stern before that comes out. Well, that should be um, interesting. Yeah, right? <laughs> if you, did you just See, I wonder what they're going to ask me about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um... How, how, um is, how is your, you know, as far as that goes, you know, Joni Lauer and things like that, you know, the last, a lot of people saw of you was on that, uh, was the Surreal Life. Surreal Life. came in on that, on that thing, you know, other than, you know, the couple of spots on um, TNA. And what was, what was your right. thoughts on how I mean, that thing was edited? Uh, say that again? What was your thoughts on how the surreal life thing was edited and how you, you know, uh, you know, yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, it was brutal, and man, and I knew, you know what? Hey, look, I, I was, it was bad enough that I, I lost my, you know, composure and, and you know, didn't, you know, keep it together. Uh, but I mean, 
See, they, they, they chopped out a lot of the stuff that happened and a lot of the things that were said that really uh, totally changed the dynamic of what happened there. You know, and, uh, but I still, you know what, I was really upset when that thing came out because, I mean, I remember walking out of there and saying, hey, look, I, I you know, I'd appreciate it if you didn't make me look, you know, worse than I already, you know, did on my own, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I wrote this letter on my on my website and uh, basically shaming them into paying for her rehab. Yeah. And they didn't like that too much. And I'm sure that might have had, you know, something to do with the way they chopped it up. But really, but I still have to, you know, in the end, I have to really blame myself, you know, mm -hmm. for even being stupid enough to go on there. I mean, like so. when that thing was when that thing was going on. I mean, was she supposed to be secluded from you, or how was that? You no. know, I mean, no. I mean, not not necessarily. Yeah. She was supposed to call. The was supposed to call me. I didn't hear from her for a week. Mm -hmm. You know, I and all I did was go to drop some flowers off for her, and they said, "Hey, why don't you bring them up?" Mm -hmm. And my dumb ass was just so like, "Oh man, I was so pathetic back then." Oh <laughs> no, I mean, geez. And when I think about it, you know, looking back at now and where I'm at now compared compared to them, jeez. How do you feel? But, over, how do you feel over? How do you feel overall? And, and how much um, right now? How much wrestling are you doing right now? Because I don't see you know you're not working full time on the Indies or anything close to that. No, hardly. I, you know, I just do a little bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, hope like hope coming up. You know, in the next few months, I I want to get a little bit you know busier, just mm -hmm. because I you know I don't I don't want to be so so. Uh, you know, I don't want to sit on my ass as much anymore. I'm, I'm healthy now. Uh, I quit smoking cigarettes finally. Um, and, you know, my life is, is, is excellent right now, so I'm what? happy. Did, did they ever um, talk, did any, any, anyone ever float to you the idea, you know, since they're doing DX in, uh, in WWE to come back um, and join them? Or was, was it broached to you or was it never even broached to you? Yeah, well, I mean, I did come, I did go to Tampa. And do the thing where I came out at the end of their match. That's right. Yeah, and uh, I think they were thinking about it, but we never really had serious discussion about it, you know. And I told them, you know, I, I was uh, I, I, I was contra contractually obligated to, uh, you know, to the uh, WSX project. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Dave, um, I don't know if I could handle working there. To be to be quite truthful with you. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, in, in what just the, the, um, the I would rather, or the, or the, I would rather the not ra not do that to them or myself. Yeah. Are you talking about just the environment? Yeah, yeah. sure. You know, and and, and um, you know, I, I don't think it's. I, I think those days for me are, are probably over. Working that kind of a schedule. Um, Sean, I want to ask you. You know, uh, one thing is. Uh, what was your reaction um, to the news about Bam Bam Bigelow? Uh oh, uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, man. Um, God, it's it's just I, I had a lot of uh, a lot of fun with Bam Bam. Um, you know, I went hunting with him. Um, I uh, had a like I worked with him like every night for a, for a long time. And I uh, match where I won the tag team titles with Bob Holly was versus him and Satanka, mm -hmm. where he shot where he shot the angle with uh, with LT, and um, so I knew him pretty well. And we got along great, even though he didn't really care for my friends too too much. Yeah, uh, he always liked me. You know, we always got along, um, and I I. I Sorry, but it's no, it's no shock whatsoever, that's for sure. You know, nothing nothing is anymore as far as that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Do you, you know, think, it's you know, sad, you, obviously, man. Um, you, you, you know, you, what, you've God, gone through, damn, you've I'm, gone I'm through sick a, of it. I mean, Sean, you've, you've gone through a lot in your career, and you've seen what's happened. Would you, looking back, okay, looking back in the, the late 80s, certainly through the 90s and everything like this, on... Are there things that pro wrestling, whether it be WWE, TNA, or any organization, can do that you think would? I don't know if anything's going to, you know, you know, fully, uh, uh, you know, like eliminate any problems. But 
perhaps things that could make things better? I mean, is there anything off the top of your head that you think, you know, like the company honestly, should do? Honestly, Dave, I don't know um, if people have thought about this, uh, but really I think the things have already been done, a lot of them. It's just you're not going to see the results of them for another few years when guys stop dying finally. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, you're, you're, you're I think there's that... always going to be guys that have problems, but the guys that wouldn't have normally had problems, um, um, I think maybe there's a, there's a better chance that they won't end up with them, you know, just because they're in the wrestling business. So do you think that some of the guys in the past few years that have passed away, some of it might have been just everything catching up with them? Yeah, and the ro- oh, definitely. Like like like, yeah. with, like with Road Warrior Hawk or somebody like that. Hey, or Kurt, you know, or Kurt Hennig. Yeah, which really hit me hard because he was one of my best friends, man. You know, and he was so fun, you know, and he handled, you know, he could t- drink twenty shots of Jack and drive a straight line down the road. You know, that kind of you know guy, and, and you never, you know, I looked at him and thought, just like a lot of the, my friends that are dead, I thought that they were uh, superhuman. You know, I mean, not literally, but, you know, so. Did you, I mean. Yeah, but, but, yeah, now guys, you know, I mean, guys will go back to their room and, and play PlayStation 2 now, as yeah. opposed to going out and getting messed up. Do you, you think know? that that. I mean, I don't know, but I've not been in, I've not worked for Vince for four years. Yeah. So I don't know what the climate is there, but when I left, guys weren't working nearly as much as, they, as we were in the, ni- you know, in the early 90s. Oh yeah, yeah. The schedule was the schedule's much better in that sense. I mean, myself, I was working fifteen days a month when I when I left there. Yeah, and that was I gave them half the month, and you know that worked out fine for me. What what do you what's what's your thoughts as far as TNA? I mean, you were there, you were in and out. Um, you know, what looking back, what, what's your feelings on that company? Um, I'm. I'm I haven't watched it too terribly much lately. Um, I'm a, I'm pulling for the company. You know, I'm rooting for it because I mean, um, you know, there it's it's obviously the same thing everybody else is. It's another place for the boys to work. Um, I'm really, I, and I'll say this publicly, I'm unhappy with with how they're treating uh, uh, my friend Ron Killings. I think they're completely wasting his talent and. Uh, and I think it sucks. Um, and and I'm really, I don't know what's going on with Conan now, but um, with, with whether or not you know whether or not they've you know ponied up any money to help him. But they loaned him uh, for them, him money for them not. For what's the- that? They loaned him money. That's so nice of them. Yeah, I know. That is so nice of them. <laughs> They'd be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. I mean. For that, really? Yeah. So I might not be able. To, I might not be welcome uh, as much when I go like there to visit next time. But yeah, you and know, seriously, what what are your thoughts on the whole VKM storyline? Because you're one of the founding members of DX, and there's DX and WWE, or at least there was till about a week ago. And there's VKM, and both are sort of doing the same thing with guys that are quite a bit older than they were during the peak. Right. Um, I, uh, I'm not a big, I'm not really, like, high on, on that either, you know. I mean, they're, do, you know, they're doing, you know, they're doing, uh, I don't, I, I, you know, I haven't really talked to either Billy or Road Dog about that either, so, like, I don't know how much of the, of the input is theirs or all the, right, you know, the writing team, who, whoever's writing there now. Um, but... I know at certain times, like, the writers were very much into, uh, into the wrestlers just following what they wrote and not having any, um, not having as much input on their own, so, um, uh, but, you know, certain guys obviously do, and, and I figured they would, so. Now, con- conceptually, uh, just looking at this conceptually, and, you know, you, you've been watching wrestling since you were a kid, and you know, you know what's going on. You sure. Know, just inst- instinctively about a lot of things. Even if you're not in the dressing room, you kind of know how people think. What What is your thoughts as far as 
the going on TNA and, you know, you know, like the knocking them or the million dollar challenge, I mean, do you think it's good for a small promotion to do it that, or do you think that it's Bush League or do you think it's just wrestling and? I don't, I'm not real, you know what, I thought about that and I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I don't, God, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you're the one doing it, you want to believe in what you're doing. You know, you want to, like, think you're doing something good or why do it. Now, when, when, so, when, when you... I mean, I don't know what, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the, what other people think of it. What? But, uh, well, I know what some other people think of it. And, yeah. Well, when you were... Uh, you know, if you're trying to pin me down to, like, tell me, for me to tell you, like, uh, um... You know, something a little bit more at, like, uh, um, I guess I'm not really, I don't like it too much at all. Okay, now, when, I, I you, when you left, when you and Eric Bischoff had your problems, and you were fired from WCW, and then you went to WWE, and the DX thing really took off, and you did the things, you know, where you went to WCW, at the time was the fact, I mean, were you legitimately mad at WCW, and that helped you? perform there or was or in your mind was it like I'm just following orders and I don't have any real emotional thing and it's just business I mean like when you were when you guys were were doing the thing with with WCW after you were in WWF um you mean when that when we did the original invasion angle and all that yeah 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 um I was just I wasn't like you know um I didn't hate them over it you know, I don't hate anybody, but, um, but um, at, the, at the time, and, and, and you know what, like, I forgive him for it, but I was still going to try to shove it up his ass. But I mean, like, like you know, like, like at the time, you, you had to think, because, I mean, I, I know from the situation at the time, and I, as how I remember it, that's what I, I thought, yeah. you, know, you were kind of a pawn, and, and, you know, you, you know what I mean, it's like, it's like some people do things to get fired, and then some people... Uh, you know, I don't know. Set an example or whatever it was. You were you were kind of put in. That was what it was, dude. I was, you know what? That was, and I read his book um, uh, about his version of that, and it Are was you all his book. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't read the whole thing, but I read that part. Yeah. Somebody called me and told me about it. Yeah. And uh, and so I went and checked it out, and and the part about me trying to hold him up. You know, that, no, that wasn't it at all. I had signed a contract. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get more money out of them. I was trying to get a raise, which is why I kept working after I had a broken neck. Because yeah. I didn't want to take myself out of the game. So the reason why he was mad was because Kevin and Scott made a comment, an off-color comment, concerning something, you know, they thought Eric was doing. <laughs> and... uh and uh, Eric got really pissed off about it, and so he couldn't really get to them. So every time he was hot at them, I, you know, I would get punished somehow, you know. Um, um, so I got that's when I got the, the letter. After yeah. like I was out for ten months, I was getting ready to come back. They paid all my salaries, 100 percent of my pay. Paid all my doctor's bills. Even after I was working for Vince, they were still paying my doctor's bills. Mm -hmm. And, and he fires me. Yeah. You know, because I, he I, thought I was... What's I just that? remember how that thing went down, and it was, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, it wasn't... <laughs> I was so happy, dude, when I got that. What, what'd you think? You wouldn't believe it. I was, I was sitting at home trying to think of ways to get out of there. Mm-hmm. Because I'm watching Mensa TV, and I'm seeing Stone Cold blow up, you know, Sean and, and Hunter. And I, and I, you know, Hunter... You know, it talked to me about the fact that Sean was going to have to, you know, quit, you know, pretty soon. And man, that was like the uh, best thing he ever did for me. Yeah, it, it did work. Oh, yeah, because that was the best run of your career. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Wrestling Observer newsletter that I've been putting out for so long, I can't even remember. Forever, dude. Yes. You've been putting that thing out since I was a kid. I know, since I was a kid, too. I'm. Yeah, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Since Brian was really a kid. <laughs> I was wow. nine. Yeah, man. I remember, remember when we were in Japan at the same time. I'll, that was, and then I was a kid. Dude, I, I couldn't even grow like hair on my face then. <laughs> <laughs> I just got finished going through puberty. Matter of fact, I think I was still going through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah, you and Jerry Lynn going to Japan. 
Yeah. Was working with all with all the Mexican wrestlers. Yeah, man. And I, you know what? Like I go to Mexico a little bit here and there, and I see those guys down there. You know, like uh, some of those guys I worked with, like the the Brazos, or you know, and Silver, like you know, Silver King. Uh, that's too bad about him. Uh, not Silver King. I mean Tejano. Oh yeah, Tejano. That is really that was really too bad about him. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because I used to work like I worked with those guys a lot. Yeah. That was fun, man. Yeah. But, have you seen it? So, so you you um you saw um Brazo de Plata uh, in the last couple months, right? Uh, no, I didn't get a chance. I just missed him. Actually, oh, he came after you left. I would have loved to have seen him, man. Yeah. God, that guy's hilarious. I love working with those guys too, man. I mean, they're in their element, in their environment, man. Those guys are a great act. How what? big was Porky back when you were working with him? He was like you know three. Oh, he's a little big. He's about between between two eighty and three, but he's short, dude. So that's big for that's huge. I think he put on another hundred pounds since those days. Yeah, I he, 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 I, I body slammed him before. Yeah, I remember um, when they first went to Japan. They were those guys. The the three brothers were awesome. And that yeah, was, man. I mean, Porky was still Porky, but it's not like he is today. I mean, now he's just huge. You know, yeah. he did all the comedy, but I mean, he could still go, and he would do all the the flying and everything like that. I mean, that would actually kind of made the act, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, they had that Three Stooges thing down pat, man. Yeah, oh yeah, the thing where they all punch each other and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lands on him, and then he got he cries and all that. I mean, God, I was like, a lot of people like when they think of that guy, they only know him from being on SmackDown, and there were the midgets. <laughs> Golly. What was what was the what what was your experience like the last time you went down there? Down to Mexico? Yeah. Uh, it was kind of well. No, see, down, that was when I went to uh, Guadalajara and did that thing with with Vamp when he was you know working on trying to open that uh, revolution. Uh, revolution. To yeah. yeah, and I mean it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It was like you know like one of those kind of matches where like I hit him with the glass tubes. Mm -hmm. The light, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, the fluorescent tube match. Yeah, the fluorescent tubes and one thing. It was just like a death match type of thing. I got thrown in an exploding thing, and um, there was he got you know he got collar everywhere. And mm -hmm. It was good for the TV. It shot well, mm -hmm. but I, I, I apparently, from what I was told, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know. It was weird. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had, the last time I was in AAA. Um, well, I was only there once, actually. But I, I went down there for for one show and ended up staying for like close to a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that was when when Pena started. Uh, while I was there, like I saw him, and then he was gone, mm -hmm. and nobody ever saw him again. Right. So the 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 office was kind of in turmoil a little bit, you know. So. Did like, you, uh, when you were down there, did you notice there was something wrong with them, or did that, or did you figure that out after you left, or what were your thoughts? Well, about? I didn't know, because I just heard that, you know, they do things, you know, they do things way different in Mexico. You know, and, mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing that they are as successful as they are, with how inefficient the, the whole machine is, you know? <laughs> how absolutely insane everything is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? And the, and the, and the, like, the, a lot of the, Psychology or lack thereof, and um, some of the guys know. <laughs> and then I, I mean, it's, it's some of the stuff I saw in there that people that people accepted, like that the fans accepted, was amazing. <laughs> yeah. How would you compare working in Mexico to working in Puerto Rico? Uh, it's quite a bit different. Yeah. Quite a bit different. I kind of dig Mexico. I dig Mexico though because the people are so into it, and I feel like, and I, and I noticed this to be true, at least with my limited experience there, that when I do, when I have my my matches and do the laying out how I would land out anywhere, they work just fine down there. Mm -hmm. You know, the psychology is the is psychology is psychology mm -hmm. to me. You know, and I I found my style to, to to do okay there when I had a guy that was, you know, like able to adjust to me. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to really adjust to me because I was really bad about adjusting to them. Mm -hmm. At this point, like I, I was better at it when I was wrestling them more back, you know, and you know years ago. But I was like I was kind of lost in there to be honest with you. We're gonna go start a couple times. 
some phone calls. We're going to start with Kenny in Washington, D.C. Kenny, you're first up with Sean. Johnny, what's up, dude? Um, I actually had two questions. Uh, one was for Sean, and one uh, was a question about, uh, about Bam Bam. First, uh, for Sean, I know that um, you're working a, more, a much more relaxed schedule, and uh, you're sort of precluded from doing any WWE or, or TNA work. Are there any other restrictions uh, internationally or independent uh -oh. who you can't account uh -oh. for? Okay, so are we going to see you on uh, anything else? That... Hello? Are we going to see Hello you there. anywhere can else? Can you soon? talk louder? Sorry, are we going to see you anywhere else? Could you guys hear them? No, it's phone no, 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 dying. Phone dying. We're, going to have oh, to, uh, okay. we're going to go to the next caller. We're going to have to go to, um, is it Alan in Australia? Hello? Alex. Alan? Alan? Uh, Alex. Alex. Alex in Australia, what's going on? Yeah, you just got Xbox. Hey, man, what's going on, Alex? Just going to How you doing, Nate? How you doing? Yeah, I'm going good. What's going on, man? What do you want to know? I was asking, I've got a few questions. Um, what do you, Have you made SmackDown with Shorty on Center? What do you think of it? Pardon me? John have Cena? you played the... The latest WWE video game. Which I, you know, I, did, did you guys hear what he said? He's asking about a video game. Which one are you asking about? The Raw vs. SmackDown video game? Raw vs. SmackDown. Oh, uh, am I on it? What do you think of the game? What do you think of the game? Oh, I've not played it. I've not played it. I mean, if if I if somebody told told me I was uh, on it, I would probably check it out. But other than that, I'm not really into the video games too much. They were very good. Question. Um, is it, uh, there's rumors I've heard that um, you're going to be returning to WWE to join HBK at True, the DX rumors. Yeah, we talked about that um, earlier. Is he asking me if I'm going to return to WWE to go yeah, with DX? DX? Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. I don't, I'm pretty sure, like almost 100 percent sure that uh, that's not going to happen. If you were not under contract with WSX, would you consider it, or is this uh, yeah. the whole DX thing? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's funny how, like, things change when you have a good, a good gig. Mm -hmm. You so know? You really, um, you really like this gig. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I do, man. I, and, and I didn't want to walk out on it, uh, honestly. Um, and I was very grateful when it came along because I... You know, I was trying to, like, after I missed that show with TNA, um, you know, I wasn't working there for a while. And I, then I came back and did one match, but they were, you know, they were taking their time, uh, put me back in the swing of things, and I, I had to make money. And while I was, while I was like, quote, unquote, suspended, um, which, I mean, I wasn't really suspended because I never was under contract there, uh, but... Um, Geez, um, that came along. Kevin Weinrock called me, and, and it took a, that thing was a long time in the making, man. He'd been working on that a while, so oh, yeah. you know they they paid me great, and uh, they made me feel wanted, man. Like they were they valued me being there, so that means a lot. To and me. what's your name going to be? The wrestling for Shadi X is it Six Pack? Uh, six. My, I'm going by Six Pack. Basically, so how like what I. Right. X. What's that? Be called X Pack. How can you know yeah, I, can't use, I can't use Xbox like on somebody else's TV. You know, he's, Vince has never given me a problem like using it on like an independent show. You know, but so I do own Six Pack. I got that in writing from them before I left. So if you leave, so, um, so if you leave wrestling with X, you might come to back to the lobby because you're a great wrestler. Okay. Thanks, mate. All right, thanks very much. Okay, we're going to go to Phil. Phil, are you up? Phil. Phil. What's Phil. up with the kid? Xbox, hey. what's going on, man? What's going on, dog? Hey, dude. Hey, is there like a little part of you that like maybe got burnt out a little bit sitting there watching DX and like you weren't there and everyone was carrying on? I know I was um, burnt out to see Pot come out. Well, uh, I came out with them at one, at one of their matches on a house show here in Tampa. Uh -huh. And uh, and it was cool, man. I had a great time doing it. And like, like the thought went through my mind, man. The boy would be great to be back and doing that. But like, like I said, real, you know, reality set in, and and I 
just I felt like I wasn't, you know, really, uh, you know, didn't know if I could handle it. Right. Really. Right. You know, um, and I had a pretty good gig, man. This this WSX thing, I I I'm having a good time there. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm, I'm grateful that uh, you know that they're grateful to have me. I mean, that, that that's kind of cool. You know, like a wrestling promoter can be grateful to have a, a, a particular wrestler working for him, but very rarely do they ever actually tell them that or admit it to them. Right. Because they never want them to know how you know how valuable they are to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how easy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Is there any other big names in that promotion with you? Is there any truth about well, your I mean, showing like up? Van Piro, Van Piro, like is like the only other guy that's really known. Okay. You know. Um, but these other guys, man, are, are, I mean, it's, the people are going to take to them quick, I think. Right. You know? Hey, good luck with I you. I think. Man. Thanks, bro. Wrestling Society X on MTV's Tuesday nights, starting the 30th, although there will be a preview of the, um, the original pilot, I guess, on the 26th, Friday night, this coming Friday night. Um, what's that? Say that again? What? What did you just say? I'm oh, just, uh, sk- giving the schedule. Uh, on the 26th? Yeah, they're doing a Friday night show, yeah. Oh, really? They're going to play a couple days early? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, I didn't know that, man. Yeah, they, it's kind of... How come I didn't know that? You guys knew it. I didn't know it either, actually. I just found, wow. out, I just found out this morning from, from a reader who emailed me and said that it's playing on Friday night, and then I uh, emailed Keith Lipinski of, uh, you know, of Wrestling Society X and Kevin Kleinrock, and they both right. said, yeah, it is, and they weren't, you know, it was it was like, you know, they wanted to publicize the Tuesday because that's the rating everyone's going to look at, but in fact, MTV right. told them a couple days ago that they were going to have a special Friday night showing ahead of time. So okay. That's the deal. I want to ask you, what guys, whether it's, it doesn't matter where, that you've seen, WWE, TNA, whatever, are there some young guys you've seen who you think can carry the business five years, seven years from now? I was, you know, I was thinking like at one point that Randy Orton um, uh, was was one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not like 100 percent sure, like one way or another. Now, like you know, like I still think he can be mm-hmm. because he was on his way to doing it. You know, I guess. I mean, I guess he's. I don't know. I haven't seen him lately, like in the last. Um, um, few months so i mean he might have stepped it up and i know he was off a while or whatever but yeah here's the thing with edge is you know you know being associated with edge i think has helped him out a lot oh that's right yeah 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 Yeah. i haven't really seen a lot of that man to be 100 percent honest with you yeah um the yeah but i've seen a little bit it's it's pretty good Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean you know the thing you know you know um you know hunter hunter with the hunter's injury and right kind of um you know, it's like, you know how those things can be a blessing in disguise? You know, you keep going and yeah. going with the same thing because that's what you're doing. And then when something... Right, but when, when, the, when the legs are, are so worn out, they're getting wobbly and they're still trying to... They're still but, trying to, um... But the, the, the thing on that is, is it, it, it keep, really... Keep something going. It really heated up that? Orton. It heated up Sean. And they're going to get a big boost, you know, six, eight months whenever he comes back. He's going to be right. fresh, and they're going to want him, you know, as opposed to some, you know, having seen him every week for four years like it's been. Right. You know. So, like, um, is that, I mean, do you, how does that, how does that uh, affect their plans going into WrestleMania, I wonder? Well, it does change WrestleMania, so they have to redo whatever they were going to be doing. That, 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 right. that, that does change, but... I think, um, you know, watching last Monday's TV and then Monday before, ever since the injury, the crowds have been a lot hotter because, you know, it's, it, it's interesting to me that when something real happens, the crowd reacts like, you know, they, they can sink their teeth into something realistic like, you know, his injury because they know the injury is real, they know the surgery is real, and they're right. willing. And, and you know what? They all know Agent Orton didn't really do it, but but they were in the ring with him, and, they were, and it was like the heat that those guys had was like, you know, Fifty percent more than they had the week before, you know, just because That's of that cool. injury. So maybe I'm completely wrong about uh, about uh, Orton, but that was just what I was going on a few months ago, you know. Well, he was languishing there for a while, no question. Yeah, man, the, the, he was becoming the master of the rear chin log for a minute. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> but but you know what, man? Uh, the Samo- Samoa Joe is. I'm a huge fan of his, and I I know that like I'm not like uh, you know I'm, that's a pretty big fan club. 
Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people are, are fans of his, so it's not like I'm saying anything anybody doesn't already know. Yeah. Um, but in my opinion, you know, and I think he can do, he's, he's good, like, he can talk, too. Yeah. I think. And, um, um, God, I, I'm not, like, Bobby Roode, I, I see some potential in him. Do you? I, well, I did. I haven't. I haven't seen him lately. But like originally, when I worked with him, I thought the guy had some potential. Um, he's a good worker. There's uh, something. There's something. He's not, he hasn't been able to get over the top. They gave him a new act. Right. Well, um, do you, like I don't really like. Do you think that's something that that's attainable? I don't. Is, know it, that, that, is it that thing that like on the the X factor? Yeah. The thing with him is is the new act. Everyone knows it's not real, and I think that it's really hurting him. You know, because what they did was right. they gave him a new act where he's like this, you know, Wall Street tycoon. And, you know, the people don't know, you know, no one buys They know it. that he's not, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. So I, I think that that's hurt him a lot. Well, he, although he, I he, thought he was like the Rick Rude deal. Or the... It kind of changes by the week sometimes. <laughs> really? Oh, huh, the managers, you know, I kind of thought that was like, they were making a big deal out of him. Uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't know, um... I, I think that if, if uh, Teddy Hart can pull the reins back a little bit mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, back into, you know, at least into Earth's atmosphere, mm-hmm. I think the guy's got just, like, unlimited potential. What do you think as far as his charisma and his ability to, like, you know, as far as to get over on television? Um, I have it, like, like, when he did his stuff, um, you know, on WSX, um, you know, for the for the nine episodes we did, I didn't see all of it, and I just saw like the match, the matches. So I've not seen him, you know, like you know, cut a promo or anything. But uh, I think that he's got that, you know, he's got the the, the ingredients. Because he was in, you know, I like I hope I'm not wrong. Obviously, yeah. Because he was in when he was in TNA, he was the original captain of Team Canada, and in right. the ring. I mean, in the ring, he was really good, but he did things to piss everybody off, basically. And, yeah. And ended up... Well, that's why he's in WSX. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever looked at the roster, dude? <laughs> well, at least from the original show, you had New Jack, you had me, you had Teddy Hart, freaking TJ. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was the misfits of wrestling, bro. Yeah. yeah. You ever seen the Extreme Tiger? Because I know Vampiro was... Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, he's, I thought he was really good. I saw him give the, in Guadalajara give it through the Spanish fly from the top rope to the floor to the table. Oh, jeez. Yeah, <laughs> sick, man. Yeah. Look and I, like I had heard the guy didn't have a very good body and he smoked cigarettes, but like apparently he had been to the gym and maybe by, by the pharmacy since... Somebody told me that. Yeah. Because he looked a lot, like he looked like, you know, he looked, I thought he looked okay. Mm. We're going to go to our last caller, which is John. John, what's happening? Hey, Dave, great show. Oh, thank you. I just want to ask, what's up, uh, John? John uh, hey, what's up? I just want to ask, you, whatever happened to Scott Hall, your old buddy? Scott Hall? Um, well, I, Scott and Kevin and I uh, recently did a... Um, we did a signing um, in Times Square for uh, it was to it was to do with the uh, the Jack Specific dolls the the you know the classic superstars uh, series that came out like uh, Kevin Kevin has one and uh, and um, and I have one and Scott Scott also came so it was like the Wolfpack uh, you know it was the first time we were together in four years and. Okay. Uh, yeah, How we signed all that stuff, so that was the last time I, I seen him. Have you talked to him since then? How's he doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, here and there. He's talking about making him come back. And he was getting in shape, you know, last time I saw him, he looked a lot better. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, uh, the Wrestling Society X, man, I'll be watching. Okay, cool. Thanks, dude. Right. Yeah, all man, right. I think you'll enjoy it, man. Cool. Thanks, bro. Okay, so lots of, lots of high flying in the in the future on the show then, right? Not from you, necessarily, from some of the other guys. What's that? Are, are you at the point now where you would rather be blown up than do high flying? Uh, no, I want I want to do it all. Okay. I want I want to do I still want to do my high my high flying. You know, I mean, I just got to pick and choose. Like I did my tope, you know, the same stuff I did that was considered 
like, you know, a big deal. Uh, you know, years ago, it's not really a big deal anymore, but they still, people still give me a polite reaction when I do it. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, but okay. I like to do that. I like to, I like to, you know, I like to have a physically ag aggressive match. And, um, you know, the high climb didn't, usually did, isn't what hurt me. You know, it was the bumps and stuff. So I'm just like trying to limit that. Mm -hmm. So, um, hey, you know what? You were asking me about, like, or you were telling me about Teddy Hart. Yeah. And um, how he, he, you know, he got heat with the guys in the back. Um, I, You know what? To give me, like, a locker room full of guys that are kind of marks for themselves a little bit, you know, like, a little bit of a problem, man, because those guys are usually pretty brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, a lot of the time, they're, 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 they bring something to the table, and... So if a guy's not like a fan of himself, then why should anybody else be? That's an interesting topic right there because you know what's funny is when whenever I hear people talk about this wrestler, you know, is like a, a big fan of themselves, I always think, you know, knowing wrestlers and everything, that all of the great ones are because I think if they weren't, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be who they are in the first place. Absolutely. So what? You know what? I mean, uh, that's. God, give me a room, give me a locker room full of marks for themselves. <laughs> you know, I mean, as long as they, as they take, you know, take orders, yeah. or, 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 you know, like, do business, I should say. Yeah. Sean, we're totally out of time. I want to thank you very much for joining us. We'll see everybody in Hey, I had a great time, you guys. Okay. Um, MTV put the uh, debut show on on Friday night. Um, and we don't even know what time it's actually going to be because um, I've heard like five different times, but it's, it's listed at... It may be all five times, actually. Yeah, it's listed at 11 p.m., and they didn't really want... Um, you know, the... It's funny because, you know, like the idea was to debut it on, on a Tuesday in the regular time slot, but they... MTV just decided, well, we've got this time slot free on Friday, and it's actually going to air several times before the Tuesday debut, but the Tuesday debut is the ratings they're going to look at, and so, you know, it actually works against you. Yeah, very sad news yesterday, um, or, or Friday, I should say, the um, the death of Bam Bam Bigelow, Scott Bigelow, who was only 45 years old. He passed away at his residence in Hudson, Florida. Um, right now, there is no um, cause of death that has been released. His girlfriend found him. I, they don't even know if he, yeah, he fell asleep, or when he went to sleep, he never woke up is basically what happened, and it's not the first time that we've heard that story, and, um, you know, probably... I don't want to speculate what it probably is, other than you know, maybe some for, for, you know version of a heart attack, and uh, it's another one. Um, you know, it's just an, an unbelievable. You know, we talk about this when, when when this happens. It happens several times per year, every year, where a wrestler who we all grew up watching uh, passes away at a very young age. You know, and someone who was a major star, big of course, a star, big star in Japan, big star in WWF, headlined WrestleMania with Lawrence Taylor. Uh, wrestled pretty much all the big names everywhere in every promotion and uh, had a lot of uh, problems at the end with, with painkiller addictions and, and back problems and um, pretty much had stopped wrestling in the last several years, although he did wrestle in matches. I think he wrestled in matches latest this past year. Um, and uh, I know that uh, people had seen him. He was in an independent show in Florida maybe a month ago, and they said he was looking great. So, um, but... That's the situation, and um, just very agile, a uh, big guy. You know, when Bam Bam Bigelow first came along, he was doing stuff that that nobody had ever done before. There never was never a guy who was, I think, I think he was legitimately 380 pounds about the time he started, 360 to you know, ranging from like 360 to 390, sometimes 400, and um, you know, drop kick off the top rope, moon salts. Oh, he did his uh, cartwheel. Dive, cartwheel diving headbutt. Um, the first time um, he worked for a major promotion was the Memphis promotion with Jerry Lawler. And, I mean, they, boy, you want to talk about, you know, and, of course, you know, this, you're talking about a guy who had a handful of indie matches. I mean, a handful. And and went to Memphis um, because he had a good look. In those days, uh, there weren't a lot of people with tattoos on their heads in those days. So you now they're off. You, his commentary on Friday in his interview, I thought, my God, that's Rebecca. Oh boy, not good. No. So anyway, I got to ask you a question very quickly. You you were talking about um, WSX, and I've been having this discussion, so I thought I would get your take on it. The rating for the show. What do you think it's going to do? Ah, uh, 
God, you know, I don't know. Um, the debut rating, I mean, you're going against ECW, doesn't help. Um, you're going against, I believe they're going to be going against the MSNBC thing. Not that that's going to really be a factor, Warrior Nation. Um, so I will say 0.7. I'm thinking a point five. Well, we will see. Uh, also, before we go any further, I also want to mention WWE firings this week. Quite a few. Uh, Sylvester Turkai. You know, the, the one thing about the firings this week, this is this again, and it, it points to so much about WWE, the, the organization level. And WWE used to be such a great organization. I mean, I mean, even if you didn't like the wrestling or you didn't like the angles, it was like things were planned out. It was it was so professional. I mean, like when guys were going to get fired, even if you didn't know ahead of time, they made sure that they buried everyone. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, they did the jobs on the way out. Well, the guys the really were doing the jobs on the way, what, what it was. The fact is the promotion got their pound of flesh out of everyone. And here, like with Turkai and, and with Tatanka, I think the last time I saw Tatanka on television, he was pinning Jimmy Yang. He was. That was his last match. So it's like, so obviously when that happened, which was a, um, that aired a week ago Friday, so, so when, uh, at that point, and even this last week, where they didn't at least give Jimmy Yang a win or do something to, to bury the guy, as of Tuesday of last week, and this guy was fired on a Friday, they did not know they were going to fire him. Yeah. Else, and, and, and that goes, and Turkai was the same way. Turkai was on the ECW show. Um, I mean, he was just standing there, but they didn't, you know, they he didn't He was have in the somebody. same role as always. He didn't get beaten up. He didn't get sent packing. He yeah, came out. like they had, you know, they had Bobby Lashley spear him in 45 seconds to, yeah. you know. So, like, the, when you look at this list, you know, you can tell, like, at least with those two, um, this was not a well thought out um, thing. It was just like one day they got, and we're gonna we're gonna clean house, and all of a sudden, you know, somebody spoke badly about them, and they were gone. Those well, two. Well, even then, it, it's sort of funny that okay, let's say you wake up Wednesday and you decide, okay, we need to trim twenty useless people in our opinion from this company, and you make your list, and then can't you just say, well, you know, let's write these people off this week, and then we'll fire them next week when he was 19 years old and this this was right around that time and I mean I and it was on and I don't remember the show it might have been Entertainment Tonight or whatever a show like that it was a national show and here's this guy who no one had ever heard of and he um, did a diving headbutt off the top rope at his size which freaked people out and I remember Joel Watts uh, Bill's son calling me up and uh, you know we'd both seen it and just go like what the hell was that <laughs> so he talked to his dad you know and it's just like you know like to, 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 to book, you know, like you know, no one's ever heard of this guy. And Bill's reaction, of course, was, "Well, who's he ever beaten?" So he ended up going to Memphis and ended up in Dallas. And I don't think he he, he never ended up with Watts. You know, he could have just never worked out that way. But anyway, I thought, uh, "Who'd he ever beat in this fake sport?" Um, you know, but in, you know, it's funny because in those days, that's how they used to, uh, you know, determine your your rank in the sport is um, who you were picked to beat. And if you hadn't been picked to beat anyone or you hadn't worked a territory. You know, it didn't matter how impressive you looked, who you know, you weren't a star. Well, in a way, it's kind of interesting because in those days, that did mean something, who you beat in the fake matches. Because it, it, Oh, it absolutely did. Yeah, I mean, when I watch, <clears throat> I was just watching SmackDown, and they talk about Mr. Kennedy, and the big, the big drawing card is, he beat six world champions last Except year. Except everyone was a fluke. He didn't really beat any of them. But, but, I mean, even then, the point is, like, what does that mean anymore? Not a whole lot. No, but if Mr. Kennedy had actually... You know, the thing is, is, is if Mr. Kennedy had actually... You know, there were guys if like... If he legendary. decisively beaten six world champions that people cared about, that would mean something. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were, there were legendary deals in the old days when they would groom guys for world championship matches where they would bring in, like, you know, big stars... And, you know, the guy would beat, like, six former world champions or something like that, but he would actually beat them. And by the time they got to that title match, I mean, that was a legitimate thing to where people considered that, like, a big-time title match. I don't think I don't think Kennedy and Batista, that anyone's considering that a big-time title match. Um, no. Well, the fact that it's on the undercard of the Royal Rumble tells you something. Yeah, but they, I mean, they've had big-time title matches on Royal Rumble cards before. Sure, but yeah. if they really thought that this was a big deal, they would save it for a standalone show next month. Well, especially when they have to do so many. Yeah. Um, well, we've already seen... The other thing is we've already seen the Batista-Mr. Um, Kennedy program, and it wasn't too bad, but 
It's going to be a challenge in that world championship uh, slot, if you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. it's not an eight-minute match where, you know, Mr. Kennedy's going to bleed a gusher. You know what I mean? Um, they need to get Batista on a different tour from Rebecca DiPietro because they are becoming each other. Do you notice that? It's the problems were before before her. Oh, he's getting... Going, everybody. This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here with Brian Alvarez for the next two hours talking pro wrestling as well as mixed martial arts here on the Sirius, uh, on Sirius Channel uh, 122 and the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Uh, we are going to be joined in about a half an hour or so by Sean Waltman. Another promotion. It seems like every week we talk about a new promotion. This one's pro wrestling. Years ago, we would always talk about new promotions, and the whole key was... Nobody on tele- Nobody wanted to put them on television, and without television, there really isn't much you can do, realistically. So now, all of a sudden, come this summer, Brian, there's going to be so much television between pro wrestling and mixed martial arts that it's never going to end. Well, we've got like 500 channels now, and channels such as Versus. Yep. I guess they need something to fill up. I actually get Versus on my cable system, and it's like half Versus and half the Golf Channel. And I can't imagine them having stuff to fill up 24 hours a day. So, you know, there's uh, there's room for MMA, and I think that we're going to see more groups this year with TV. And the difference is that when you do have 500 channels, just having TV doesn't necessarily even mean anything anymore. It depends it, on how it, it strong no, your TV is. nothing unless the, the network is strong enough and it gets behind you and makes you a focal point of their advertising, like um, Spike has done with Ultimate Fighter and to, a, and to an extent TN, TNA as well. Yep. And, um, you know, you're on in a good time slot because people, you know, it's not like when I was growing up, when I was growing up we had maybe... Um, you had five channels. No, Actually, you may have had, had less. But, but we had we had um, we had wrestling on um, maybe I, I would say when I was growing up in in California we had wrestling on generally twice a week we had um, the, uh, the or sometimes three three times depending on whether sometimes San Jose Station would have the Roy Fires wrestling and then we'd have the San Francisco would be the exact same show um, and then we also could get the Los Angeles wrestling on the Spanish Channel um, which didn't even come in well in those days but uh, that was all the wrestling we could get. So now, um, you know, you've got hours and hours of everything. But also, starting on Friday night, uh, MTV is going to be jumping into the wrestling game with Wrestling Society X. We've got Sean Waltman's going to be our guest in just a couple of minutes. And uh, he's one of the stars of Wrestling Society X. And he'll tell us a little bit about how that one's going to be different. Is Friday it night? Is, the, it will be different. Is Friday night the pilot? Friday night is the debut show, even though the actual first show is supposed to air a week from Tuesday. The to- the, I see. The debut time slot is 10.30 Tuesday night, which means it goes head-to-head with, the, with ECW. However, uh, but, but that was actually like the thing that, that made him kind of stand out. And so um, Jerry Jarrett gave him a job, um, and he went in there, and uh, they liked his look. And the first thing they did was put him over Jerry Lawler to make him a star in one night. And he was a star in one night, and Jerry Lawler made this guy look like... I mean, he was the greatest thing that ever was in wrestling. You know, whatever moves he could do, he did. And Jerry Lawler, you know, put the match together. And, and it was funny. I mean, he, he was such, he got over so big in Memphis. And then he went to Dallas. And George Scott was booking, and they called him Crusher Yurkoff in Dallas. And Dallas, you know, he was working with the Von Erichs, and he was completely unimpressive. And it was just like, what was wrong? You know what I mean? And it really shows... Well, it's kind of a story that has been told many times in wrestling with, with guys that have great athletic ability and a great look, but aren't really good workers. But when you put them in the ring with somebody that understands, okay, what can you do and what can you not do? And we'll do what you can do and avoid what you can't do and, and end up having a great match with them and sort of fooling a lot of people. But here's the other thing, too. They brought him in, and on his, in his very first match, he beat Lawler. And it was like, at that point, when you have the credibility of beating the top guy, you know what I mean? People will overlook. And I mean, if you're tentative and things like that, and he was not. You know, like, like there's certain things where you look green. I mean, he he was good enough to where he didn't look bad, if you know what I'm saying. It was I, believable that on this night he could have beaten Jerry Lawler. Oh, yeah, it was, it was done real well. And, of course, then he went to Japan, and he was, and, you know, he was a big deal in Japan because they love big guys, and, you know, they never seen a big guy so agile 
or big guy, you know, that big of a guy who was so agile. So he was a big star with New Japan, and of course WWF took him very early in his career. And uh, you know, he had a long career. He had some very big years, um, and um, was was you know a major star. Him and Big Van Vader were kind of like a monster tag team in Japan in the late '80s and early '90s. And um, you know, I remember him very very well throughout his whole career. I think I um, I think I knew him before or right after he got started, um, before he had ever had a match. I, and I don't remember the show. But um, he was friends with Paul Heyman, and um, Paul Heyman would write stories in wrestling magazines about Bam Bam Bigelow before the guy ever had a match. You know, Paul was like his publicity agent, and Paul would write wrestling magazine stories, and you know, made him out to be the next you know big thing in wrestling. And you know, and I and I, I was and everyone in wrestling was like that. It's like, okay, yeah, sure, right? Because you know what I mean. It's like you always hear, oh yeah, this guy can do this, this guy can do that, but you never believe it because wrestling in those days. You know, even more than now, is just a, a business that so many people were so full of it, right? Sure. So, so he did this match with um, at, at a nightclub, and I think it might have been Studio 54, because Heyman did the publicity of Studio 54, uh, 